Let me introduce the, our uh, third speaker, Cornelia Deres uh, from Budapest. Uh, she is an assistant professor at uh, Károly Gáspár University. And uh, the title of her paper is Crisis Represented in Theatre, Bodies, Images, Societies. And as you can see, my talk today is entitled Crisis Represented in Theatre, Bodies, Images, Societies. No, you can't see now. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, I'm going to start. Uh, so, one of the first questions that came into my mind regarding our topic today is whether we can think about crisis as a positive moment in our lives. Even though we associate the term with rather negative characteristics, the question is still on the table. Can we see crisis on the personal, on the social, on the political, or on the economic level as an opportunity? as a potential creating new, brave perspectives. Odd or strangely optimistic as it may sound, this interpretation of crisis somehow lies in the word's etymology. The Greek term crisis meant a turning point, for instance in a disease, or more literally, judgment and selection. So, crisis can be seen as an in-between time and space, a passage which suspends the dominant rules and models and actively craves for a different order and arrangement. Moreover, crisis embodies a different experience or perception of time when an acceleration of happenings takes place. This interpretation of crisis, combined with the Greek theatron, the place of seeing, can offer us an opportunity to look at theater as a place showing the reorganization of certain rules and models. In addition, theater can be seen as a place which reflects or even deconstructs decisive points or periods. Thus, the spectators are offered a subversive experience during which they can face the suspension of given social, political, or medial frames. Um, as a researcher, I am mostly dealing with contemporary European and North American theater, so I am going to use this vast field as a starting point. Uh, and by doing this, I can think of so many types of crises that theater does, can, and has recently staged. So let me provide some examples for our discussion. The crisis of the body is powerfully reflected in Societas Raffaello Sanzio's performances. This reputed Italian collective, known for its director, Romeo Castellucci, has repeatedly focused on presenting bodies which are usually neglected if not expelled from Western stages, such as old bodies, overly anorexic or obese bodies, wounded bodies, infant bodies, or animal bodies. And we can think of their piece, Giulio Cesare, loosely based on Shakespeare's work in 1997, uh, in which the character of Mark Antony, and you can see him on the picture, uh, a role which is associated with the mastery of rhetorics was played by an actor who had recently had a laryngectomy. That means most parts of his larynx had been surgically removed. Uh, the performance highlighted how the trace of this surgical action, the wound, the black hole on the front of the actor's neck, was vitalized and made audible during Mark Antony's famous monologue. The ghostly, deep and dark frequency, literally coming from the actor's throat, pointed out a crisis of political speech, including questions such as who can speak to and affect a community? Or can the wounded body itself speak and be heard? In Giulio Cesare, the speaking wound also pointed out a crisis in opposing the natural and the artificial body, after which new biomedial or biopolitical orders should come. Another type of crisis represented in contemporary theater is the crisis of images. 
This crisis is shown in many Wooster Group's productions. This US-based company finds a unique interest in reflecting on the history of image industry and its effects on perceiving and creating reality. The 2006 Hamlet, for instance, was based on the reanimation of a 1964 film version of John Gilgut's Hamlet on Broadway. The doubling of the characters here provided an uncanny experience, while the interplay of recorded images and living bodies constituted a specific sphere for living images. The Wooster actors in the performance tried to copy the exact mimes gestures and tones of the film actors, and accordingly, the production pointed out how certain images, interpretations, and cultural traditions affect our understanding of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Therefore, the impossibility of going back to and reanimate the visual or textual origins of Hamlet also created a crisis in putting the body and the image into a well-known hierarchy. And in this hierarchy, the, the image, the letter, the image, can only be seen as a representation of the body. However, in Wooster Group's performance, it was the body that became a replica of the image. Um, the third and last type of crisis that I would like to mention in much more details today is the crisis of past and contemporary society reflected in uh, and by theatre. And here I will talk about two Hungarian performances uh, by the same theatre company. Uh, this company is the Collective of Natural Disasters, uh, which is known uh, for its director, Jörg Árvai, and premiered two quite unique productions entitled Living Space and Infinity. These p uh, pieces, as you can see, are separated in time by more decades. However, they are also closely connected through their references to certain claustrophobic, oppressing soci sociocultural systems, which, in spite of their ideological differences, are following quite similar logic of power structures and surveillance. In 1986, artists Jörg Árvai and Ivet Bozsik premiered Living Space, uh, which was considered an iconic production in the history of Hungarian dance theater. Uh, it merged elements of body art and experimental dance. Here, the solo performer, Ivet Bozsik, was set in a small glass box, a terrarium, during the whole show, suggesting the claustrophobic atmosphere of the country, which, at the time of the premiere, was still under Soviet control in the Eastern Bloc, behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, it is interesting that living space opening scene started with the director, Jörg Arvai, cleaning the dirty surface of the glass box. You can see a picture of this as well. Accordingly, here the director represented a male authority, making the female creature behind the glass visible, as well as subject of surveillance and observation. Afterwards, the whole production focused on the struggle of the captured performer, offering a story of an anti-utopian creature on the edge of animality. And 26 years later, Arvai reapproached Living Space with his company. And uh, in the 2012 production, um, we could see, uh, uh, so the production partly restaged Living Space by placing the solo performer uh, who was this time Rita Gobi, in a very similar glass box. However, it also reformed its main questions about human freedom by offering a mediatized landscape on stage, where the dancer's body was rewritten not only through a new artist, but also by the approximately three decades of social and medial changes. In Infinity, um, the solo performer was connected to the glass box through prosthetic supplements, tubes, forming a post-organic body. Above this glass box, there were monitors offering live streams of the performer from a bird's eye view, as well as pre-recorded images of wars and terror attacks. 
the ongoing companion of white noise, moving images, and prosthetics created a post-human landscape on stage, and the phenomenon of claustrophobia was seen through technical innovations forming new systems and new forms of regimes. Um, and the connection of these two productions is what uh, interests me, because I think it points out how the two leading economic political constructions of the 20th century, capitalism and communism, can be seen as varied yet very similar realities of Hungary, or one would say Eastern Europe. In both productions, the act of watching the performer closed in an inhumanly small glass prison, positioned as a lab rat, called attention to the various modes of thinking about humans as observable species, a subject of social, economic, or even biological experiments. Also, the annoying similarities of human control in these productions suggested an interpretation of recent Hungarian history as a mutation from the communist state security sorry, into modern security state, a term discussed in detail by Giorgio Agamben. Both are seen as oppressing systems, handling humans as mere biodata. The logic is similar, but the form is different. Uh, communist regimes and the huge networks of state police agent and civil agents and civil informers turned societies into a network of reports on public and private activities that might be a threat to sociologist ideology. Uh, however, contemporary states use biometric data to control uh, and observe their citizens that are seen, so these citizens are seen as potential threats uh, or potential terrorists. As Giorgio Agamben pointed out, and I quote him, we should not be astonished if today the normal relationship between the state and its citizens is defined by suspicion, police filing, and control, end quote. So, the crisis of past and present societies could also be seen as a crisis of linear and progressive history. Uh, I think a possible potential for us, represented by the various types of crisis in theatre, is to realise that new perspectives, new orders, which do not necessarily rely on binary oppositions, are to come, or they have already been here for a while, just as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>